Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. Our first Patreon goal is 100 Patreon subscribers. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a Jackhammer Chatterbait. For more information on our Patreon, please go check it out in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this little bit of a last minute live that we have going on tonight. Happy Wednesday. I hope everyone had a wonderful trick-or-treating holiday with the little ones. Hopefully you got to dress up, watch some spooky movies. Uh, we are here at November 1, and you know I'm going to make this a quick little sit wrap before we get the guests on. We're here to talk about not only the NVKBA, which is the Northern Virginia Kayak Bass Association's season with Mr. Mike Ortega, but we're also going to be talking about the Virginia Angler Kayak Elite season with Joe. He had an episode that busted. I think it has over like uh, 1,500 downloads talking about the snakehead tournaments that he puts on, the 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 almost what would you call the bycatch product tournaments, which are a lot of fun. And both of them are going to be talking about a tournament that's coming up right now, uh, the Heroes on the Water Benefit Tournament. That is going to be a statewide Virginia online tournament. And without further ado, let's get these guys on. Uh, we got Mike and we got Joe here. Guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. What's up, brother? Hey, Thomas. Thanks for having us, man. No, you're very welcome. You're, Thank you guys for making this you know happen. You got me cracking up. You can't be starting the video with that boat flip video. Oh my god. Yeah. I remember when you first posted. I think the funniest part about that was when you're like, huh! as soon as the bit the bass hits the day. <laughs> Dude, it um, hit. I thought I, I was like literally middle. like if like right now I should be a, a skeleton sitting here. That's how freaking funny that is. <laughs> so classic. Original content, man. You, you're killing it, brother. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I don't even know how we'd start this. Well, I guess, Mike, since really you set this whole thing up, I guess I'll start with you. Um, and what we're going to do, guys, first off, is we're going to kind of talk about the NVKBA season, uh, the Virginia Angler Elites, and then we're going to segue straight into uh, the, the benefit tournament. So NVKBA 2023, it's in the rearview mirror. Yeah, man. Hey, first and foremost, thank you very much, man, for setting this up last minute for us. Um, I know... I've been busy, man. Ever since the classic, dude, I've just been busy with with life, uh, works, you know, wife's in college, all that good stuff. Like just a lot going on at the uh, the Ortega residence. And uh, to kind of set this up last minute, I definitely appreciate that. I just wanted to put that out there. Joe, thanks a lot for coming on tonight too, brother. I know like, you know, the whole communication thing hasn't been the greatest over the last month or two with, with this event in general, but we owe it to the beneficiaries, right, of, of making this as, as best as we possibly can. So um, just a culmination of that, you know, obviously the folks over here is in the water. They've been very pleasant to deal with uh, and, and all that. So, um, you know, just kind of wanted to forefront that. Appreciate you, Thomas, for for being a voice for us, being a good platform for us. And obviously Joe and, and everybody who's making this happen. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as like NVKBA goes, dude, we had a hell of a season, uh, you know, had we definitely reached a few milestones as far as like what our, some of our goals were this year. We hit, you know, record numbers in our opening event and our second event. Never in my life would I have thought we would have a, a season opener and then a uh, follow-up second uh, trail stop number two of the same uh, participation levels. I think we had 82 on each event, which Damn. is really good. And we would have actually broke that on our second tournament had we had not. I think we had a couple guys that weren't uh, able to make it. So, uh, but no, man, we've been doing great. Obviously. Um, the, uh, the, the the member base is what I always say to our guys, you know, this club would not be what it is without the members, right? That's what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about the, the, the folks that, you know, obviously the folks behind the scene, I couldn't do it without them. But um, this community that we've built, um, it's just amazing. And obviously Joe can attest to that um, with what he's doing. Uh, and, you know, just the, the, the quality of anglers is amazing in our area. But more than that, it's the quality of, of people that we have just down to earth, amazing individuals, people from all walks of life, right? Like this is the melting pot. We're in, we're like right outside of DC. Um, you know, obviously the DMV area will fly. Um, it's just vast in the amount of different types of people that you meet in life and to all be able to come together and have that, that camaraderie, um, you know, with fishing and our love for kayak fishing and, and just the outdoors in general has been outstanding. And just to see the club where it's at now, very, very happy, very pleased. Obviously, the work is never done. We always have room to improve. Um, 
but yeah, and I'm very, very pleased with how this year went. And I, I owe it to the people around me and, uh, uh, you know, folks like yourself, Thomas, for helping be a platform for this. Joe, all your help throughout the season. Yeah, it's been great. One thing I absolutely adore about your scheduling was the Battle of Five Lakes tournaments. It is so unique and ingenious to throw a different monkey rich into it where you can you can pick your lake. If you don't want to waste gas, you have little kids at home, but you still want to get out, you can go to a lake that's like five minutes down the road. You don't exactly. I think, it's, I think it's brilliant. Where did you come up with that, and, and how did people receive it? Well, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know when that – I think that was sort of – like from day one, that was just sort of something that we knew, right? Like we knew that it was going to be part of what, who we are. I mean, that's who we are as kayak anglers. We take advantage of whatever we can when it comes to waterways because we have the ability to. We have the ability to spread out. We have the ability to not use a boat ramp. We have the ability to um, get into very shallow water, just just remote places that you know you wouldn't think to take uh, a, a bass boat or even a, some John boats. Um, Granted, you know, kayaks are not getting smaller, <laughs> the, st the amount of stuff that we have the ability to bring. But you see a lot more guys now running, you know, second kayaks and, and, and bare bones rigs and things like that to be able to take advantage of these type of, of scenarios. And that's something that we want to continue to embrace as a uh, as, you know, a, a, a culture. Right. Like we are all about using a kayak as it was intended. Yes, it's great to have forward facing sonar. It's great to have three horsepower motors on the back. But I, as, as a club, I'd never want to forget where we came from as a, as a community, as a, um, you know, as kayak anglers, I don't want to forget our roots. And that's something that I intend to keep in NVKBA and to allow anglers to explore. That's what we're all about. And the, the ability, like you said, to, to do that on multiple bodies of water at one time is, is really cool. And of course, you know, we couldn't do it without the format that, um, that we've been running these tournaments and what we call catch photo release, right? We're not, we're not meeting up to do live, what, you know, live weigh-ins and things like that. Obviously we're doing live awards, but all this stuff is catch photo release. And, you know, we can get into a whole nother subject when it comes to that on fish mortality rates and things and, and the, the whole environmental uh, aspect behind this and conservation efforts behind that. Uh, but it's just, it's really grown to be something positive, I think for the industry, for the outdoors um, and, you know, fishing in general. Uh, but it, it's it's good, like you say, good to be able to take care to uh, be able to take advantage of spreading out and uh, and using that to our advantage. Was the Lake Anna Championship? Did you decide to go there because of how Lake Frederick was received, or it just feels like such a contrast? Be like, okay, this place has got six fish, so now let's go next year to to Lake Anna. Um, Lake Anna, we actually didn't decide that until like the latter end of the season. Uh, I mean, I think we had that nailed down, maybe trail stop five or six. Wow. Is that how we were going to actually go there, uh, decided to actually go there. Um, and it was sort of a toss up. Um, gosh, what was the other lake? We were actually thinking of something like a Lake Orange, you know, somewhere oh, where, that's cool. um, a little bit further away. Like I know folks and, and also um, I'll let this out now, but we were actually considering Briary. Um, and uh, Sandy down in Farmville. Sorry, I'm getting blown up on the messenger. Um, just to try something different, right? Like we, we did that with Lake Frederick. We threw in, uh, called an, you know, an audible with Lake Frederick because nobody had been there. And it was one of those DWR lakes that hadn't been fishable in a tournament setting over the years. So we thought it would be cool. Um, it wasn't so much, the, the reason go, by going to Lake Anna wasn't really the, um, uh, like Frederick wasn't the reason that we did that. Like, you know, obviously like it was tough fishing up at Frederick, but um, Lake Anna, it's one of those places that um, is always going to be on the schedule. We kind of are looking at that now as I guess kind of our home lake, right? Like obviously we have the Potomac river, um, but the Potomac river, the tidal Potomac river is even sometimes difficult. Obviously it's difficult to fish a lot, like all year, but, um, the amount of places that we can go as a club, um, all at one time to have everybody on the same body of water is getting limited just by the sheer size of the club and the amount that it's grown. I think that's one benefit of seeing how well these multiple lake events have done. Um, cause we even talked late summer. There are so many electric motor only lakes in Virginia 
<clears throat> that you could create different cookie cutter things to like these two lakes for an event, these two lakes for an event. So it's not just, it's not like the BFLs where you're going to go to Kerr 67 times each year. You right. can definitely spread it out. Right. And the, another big driver behind going to Lake Anna, it's one of the few places that you really have to do your homework on. So we want to challenge anglers to do that. We want to get people out of their comfort zones. Obviously, Lake Frederick was out of everybody's comfort zone, right? Um, but Lake Anna fishes very well throughout the year if you know what you're doing and if you know where to go, right? So we want anglers to be able to – we want to see who is absolutely the best of the best uh, on any given day who can go there and put their homework in, do a little bit of pre-fishing because it's such a big lake to us as kayak anglers. You know, that's – for a kayaker, that's a big lake. That's what I would consider a big lake. Uh, for a bass boat, it's probably average, you know, compared to something like Kentucky Lake, uh, you know, or some of the bigger nation national level lakes. Uh, so that's what kind of was the intent behind that, to go with something that would challenge the anglers to obviously not announce it until later on in the season, get everybody kind of, uh, you know, out of their comfort zone a little bit. As a tournament organizer, you had a hurricane barreling down on you. How hard was it to make that call? Where was your mindset going into that about, about moving that event? Well, I knew leading up to it that it was going to be a last minute call um, because I've had events in the past and this is just based off of experience to where, um, you know, we would call an event too soon and then it ended up being a good day or a decent day, you know? So being the classic, like if it was a trail stop, I probably wouldn't have been that pressed on it. I may have called it a little bit earlier, but being the classic, being that this has been on everybody's calendar all year long, um, I wanted to wait until the last minute. Um, and I knew the guys who were there were dedicated and they were going to be there pretty much regardless. I don't think I may have had one drop out after the switch. Wow. So that's that says something about the, the level that these guys were able to adjust and adapt and overcome, which is great, but I can't rely on that. You know, as a tournament director, I learned a lot by that. I'll tell you what, first thing I learned is I learned to have a backup date. <laughs> and I learned too that I need to announce a backup date to next year. We will have rain dates for probably every event. Absolutely a rain date for the classic. So, and the, and it, it's difficult to do that um, because a lot of time and effort gets put into these schedules because there's a lot going on around us. We have um, other clubs around us. We have our, our, our you know, obviously VKAE. We have uh, Mid-Atlantic KBF, uh, based out of Maryland. Uh, there's, uh, you know, some several of the Virginia trails. We have VKT to the south. Uh, we have the Bass Yak or Bass Bass Cast series that runs it down by Smith Mountain Lake. So there's a lot going on, and we have obviously the size of our club as it's getting bigger. More people are coming, which is great. It's, it's a good problem, but we want to make sure that we can still allow anglers to get the most fishing they possibly can and fish as many series as they want to fish throughout the year. I'm not about, you know, turning this into a monopoly. Like this is not what it's not what it's about. We want folks to have opportunity. So really guys, uh, my last question before we're going to be moving it over to Joe and then guys link in the episode description, to everything we talked about today, including MVKBA and any of the Virginia angler kayak elites, including the non the, the charity tournament we're going to be talking about. How do you, work your schedule so it doesn't become stale. The one thing that we talk about on the boat guys side and the biggest complaint I hear from the BFLs is, you know, we're going to go to Kerr two to three times a year and you're going to go to the James and it's basically those places. And because you have such a plethora of places to pick from, do you have in your head about like a rotation kind of strategy you like to do for new events every year? Like how, how does that work in your head? We, we, <laughs> so this is our, this was our sixth year. Um, and again, I think a lot of where we go is dependent on how many people are fishing it. If I have 30 guys or gals uh, that are going to fish it consistently throughout the year, um, we can spread out, you know. But the bigger we are, the more like if we have a 80 to 100 angler turnout for the opener next year, you can pretty much bet we're going to Lake Anna because it has the most launches and the most opportunity. Um, the Potomac River is good. That's another place where we can spread out. But really, that's kind of where, where we're um, kind of migrating to is the biggest body of water in our area. Again, we're Northern Virginia kayak bass anglers. We're not Virginia kayak bass anglers. I don't have the ability to travel all over the state all year long. So um, 
there's that, right? I'm trying to stay within a geographical region and I'm trying not to, to do too much outside of that uh, while catering to the <laughs> to the number of people that want to come fish. So that's it's starting to become a little bit of a challenge. Again, growing pains, things that I'm trying to to um, you know work through. But in order, you know, back to your question about becoming stale, I think really what it boils down to is timing, right? Like I'm not going to send somebody on the Shenandoah River in the middle of August when there's no water. Like this year was ridiculous, man. Like there's still no water in the freaking rivers around here. So I got to base off of that as well. So, you know, as much as I say that I don't want it to be stale and I really want to move these events around, really it's mother nature that's going to call a lot of the stuff around here. You know, I mean, I think that's really what boils down to where we're at and the amount of diverse fisheries that we have, even though it may look like a repeat schedule or a similar schedule, you got to understand that this thing's going to fish different every year or, or slightly different every year. And there's always something to, to take away from that, I think. Last question. Got me another one. What, what and, and everyone in the comment section do let me know this. What is everyone's definition of Northern Virginia? Because I do think that's fascinating that if you lived in D.C. your whole life, it's completely different than if you live in, you know, north of Fredericksburg. So Pennsylvania. So <laughs> Northern Virginia to me is what I look on a map and I say, all right, this is the northern part of Virginia. <laughs> and I, to me, I've, I've always based it off of anything north of Lake Anna. Nor okay, gotcha. North as, of Lake as far Anna. as like the northern part, right? Like if I was a Nova kayak club, I'd probably be fishing Burke Lake or, you know, DC, uh, Potomac river, upper Potomac, things like that. But we obviously don't have the, we're, we're too, we're too fat for that. Our club. So we got to branch it out, still call it Northern Virginia, but I'll, but literally like the Northern part of Virginia, that's as, as a tournament director, that's how I see it. But Northern Virginia, you're going to ask me like, as, uh, just Joe Schmo, you know, I'd say like, I don't know, Fairfax County, Prince William County, um, maybe Stafford County, pretty much Stafford North. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's always unique when you say Northern Virginia. And again, I don't think I've ever asked you this question about MVKBA. It's like, what is the definition of Northern Virginia? Because as Northern Virginia grows and Winchester becomes part of Northern that that hub that feeds DC, it's. I mean, first off, that's insane how this this there's, thing is growing. There's a map somewhere about what is considered the DMV. Have you seen that, Joe? I'm not sure. I, I've seen it before, and it's like. I was just gonna uh, say I've seen a map before. It's pretty it's far coming. down, actually. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's like I want to say it's down like by Spotsy or something like that, or even it's not like Dahlgren far, but it's definitely down there, like King George-ish. You know. Yeah, and then like what Thomas is talking about, like how far west of and I know, think 66 I, corridor. Yeah. You know, I, where is that Northern Virginia? You know, when does it right. become not Northern Virginia anymore? I want to say there is something at work. Um, somebody was talking about it. I think that's where I heard about it. Something at work, like about how far, like we can get on the pay scale or something like that, depending on, you know, what you make from the government. <laughs> the government pay it's scale. Area. Yeah. That's pretty much what you could go for. Government locality pay. Yeah. Yeah. That's whole crap. <laughs> I mean, hopefully both of you guys with your clubs, you've seen that people are willing to travel. And this is something I saw when I fished high school and college events. When you go down to the Carolinas and in, in, in Alabama and you fish there and they're like, well, how far do you have to travel? And for me, it's like two to three hours and like, shit, I can walk to all four events at my place. Like we're used to traveling. And so generally speaking, compared to other places in the country, we'll, we'll get up and go to go to a fishing event. Right. Now, Joe, you're club concept is so freaking cool and I, I i think i mentioned this in your episode i'm gonna mention again i'm gonna be covering next year all of his club winners and his angler of the year like i did this year um because i just don't know how many clubs really glorify snakehead fishing like like yours does it's a very niche thing it is yeah no absolutely yeah before before that though thomas thanks for everything you do uh, I, I know i told you that before but you bring a lot of information for our for what we do in our community and in throughout the state and from so many different fronts and so many different angles and topics you just do a fantastic job so thanks for what you do and and until mike and, and mvkba obviously i'm a i'm a member of mvkba so uh, i'm a little biased but yeah one of the best bass clubs i think is on the east coast is, is what mike runs and and it, it shows through how many people participate in your club and and having hung out down there in carolinas with some of those clubs mike knows 
I was down with the border, uh, Battle of the Border. Oh, they do a great job down there. Too, they yeah. do a great job. They're very, very envious of NBKBA and the size that you've grown this to. And the success well, I'll tell you, you what, man. I've always looked up to those guys too, and I, it's kind of the way I've I've tried to keep, you know, and I still do. I keep that mentality. To me, it's it's still you know what I started six years ago. Like, yeah, you know, um, keep that mentality, and I think it just it, it, it's it's humbling. But you know, if you stay down to earth with it, man. Uh, it, it'll flourish. I, I've learned that. Um, don't try to be more than what you are. Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, take it one day at a time. But like, like I was saying, the uh, the clubs around us, man, is like I, I just, I still to this day, I don't care how big NVKBA is, I'm gonna look up to every one of them because they were here before us. Like Mid Atlantic KBF, man, the Josh Evans, Matt Campbell, those guys that that had that going. That was the first club I fished in this area, and it was awesome. And um, you know, um, and then of course Casey Reed with VKBC down south. Before you know, I think he he turned that over or, or stopped doing it there for a little while. But uh, just these guys that have been there before us, and I'll never I'll never forget them, and I'm, I'm always going to be grateful for them. And I continue to this day to look up to them, man. CKA, what Hank Vajan has done with that club, man, is phenomenal. They just they run a quality series. Um, everything you, you you know, I, I strive to be. They have some awesome, awesome materials, great you know, banners, stuff like that. Dude, that that's what bring that's what it's all about. Just embracing it and, and really making it awesome. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's uh that's the way I see it. We we owe a lot lot to Mike. So yeah, thanks for all you did for us, Mike. We wouldn't, uh, I, I owe you wouldn't you be a club. Man, but you guys are like I said, are what make it, dude. And I'm I'm just I really wish that I, I hope that VKAE embraces all the the benefits that we have here. I'm so glad that you're, you're right here with us, man. Yeah, we appreciate you. But Joe. yeah, Thomas, the, the, uh, we, what you're asking, you know, the, the format and what we thought about as far as the snakehead thing, you, you said it best and, and dubbed it the best as we're all kind of tribal, um, it's a whole different breed of people that, that chase snakehead and very determined that it's just snakehead that we want to chase. And, um, so kind of filling the void for those guys to have a place to go. It's not just a Facebook page, I think, is what how I kind of envisioned it um, and putting a club together based off of the format that the bass clubs have already kind of proven were working. So um, that's what we can. That's what we did. And it, it seems to be working. Now, your club doesn't have brand of Northern Virginia. You are Virginia. And when we're talking about chasing dragons. Have you thought about venturing out into the Eastern shore areas, some of these like legendary places for snakeheads for a one-off event? Cause when you think snakeheads, it, it is definitely narrows it down to certain areas of ge you know, geographically. That's right. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, I'll tell you within the first probably couple months of, of VKA being kind of established and, you know, put out there in, in social media, all of those smaller kind of areas where, they're these smaller clubs that they call themselves clubs, I guess. And, and they're fishing tournaments and hosting tournaments. A lot of them are bait and tackle, either small companies or, or maybe even some of them on the Eastern shore were actual uh, uh, stores were holding tournaments. Um, a lot of them have reached out to us and, and said, Hey, we like what you're doing. We like, you know, how you have kind of organized and, and professionalized some of it. Again, I don't think we, we invented anything new. We just did something that was already happening. We just did it for multi-species. And uh, so, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of that, that contact and communication with other clubs. And we might try to tie down some type of, you know, team tournaments and, 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 and traveling to different areas. But I think our first year and our, our idea was to do something for Virginia um, because of the Potomac, you know, uh, ecosystem of having Snakehead. And now the Rappahannock's uh, predominantly producing pretty well. So fishing and those fisheries for Snakehead are – are good for Virginians and in, in, in our area. Northern Virginians, I guess, is what you could call us, even though I, I can't stand going north of, of Stafford. I'm telling you, that DMV area that ring is going to keep growing and growing, though. Before, uh, Frederick will be considered north. Yeah, yeah, it's just going to keep widening out. What What are your plans for the next for the next season? I mean, did you think this, this year was success? Like, how would you gauge 2023 going into 2024? Yeah, I, I think we hit we hit it on the head as far as what we were expecting. Um, there were I didn't expect to have as many uh, non Virginians come in and compete. Um, we had we had I think eighteen 
out of the 55 members that joined the club are from Maryland. Um, we had uh, several from New Jersey travel and fit and fish our tournaments. Um, we had a member join that was from Tennessee. I don't know if they fished us, but they did join and paid the fee and, and became a member. Um, so was, that was kind of what we did. We didn't expect that. We expected it to be kind of the, the locals that we knew, um, the crew that I run with, and and then a lot of the the anglers that fish in MVKBA that, that kind of dabble in, in the snakehead stuff and enjoy that. I knew that we would get some of them to come over, but didn't expect the out, outsiders, out of towners, uh, to participate. So that was good. I think that's that's going to grow some more. Um, and we have the same challenges as Mike does, just on a different scale of as far as um, growing, um, because we centralized to a one launch kind of format. Um, Which I do, love, by the way. Yeah, we do that because snakehead anglers are very um, particular about what information they want to give about where they're fishing. Mm -hmm. So by doing the same launch, same recovery uh, format, I don't have to turn the GPS on on the tournament management system. So they can fish wherever they want and, and they don't feel like they're being launched. Once we grow to a certain size and we have to use multiple launches, we're going to have to go to a GPS tracking so I can monitor and, and be fair for everyone that we're all fishing the, the correct waters and, and kind of look at that that way. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the challenges we're going to look at if we continue to grow. Um, because a lot of our launches that we have uh, that we've researched so far and we've used can only handle so many at a time. So uh, if we grow any more, that's going to be a challenge. We may have to change it up a little bit. But that's a good question. I'll state to both of you it is growing pains. I mean, Joe, you're getting to this your first year. Mike, you're going to be hitting like 250 people here soon. So, I mean, what I I'm assuming you've thought of this almost existential crisis of like, is it too big? Can you get too big? And if that's the case, are you going to have to cap tournaments, in some kind of like bracket series? That's definitely something that, um, Joel and I have talked about um, the whole capping, right? Like if you look at Hobie BOS, I think they started out and they were capping at 200 anglers. Um, and then at, I remember at one point, I think we had more anglers fishing our club than like one of the, a few of the national events, um, which is great. But again, like I need to be prepared for that day. It's not really, I don't think it's, if it's going to come, it's when it's going to come. Um, do we cap it at a hundred? Do we cap it at 150? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the answer to that yet. I just know that it's definitely uh, something to con that, that we need to consider either that or we still, which I don't, I don't like to, to, you know, to resort to like uh, the financial side to where I want to make it not, accessible for somebody who may not be able to afford it i want it to be affordable for everybody um i i don't want you to have to you know uh pull out of your kids college fund to be able to fish with us kind of thing like this is this is open to everybody and that, that's my intent but in saying that if i put a cap on it is it really open to everybody i, I don't know it's really a first come first serve thing at that at that point and some guys you know there are folks that aren't on social media that fish our our, our trail and I've been doing, um, trying to put a lot more effort into making sure that this is as available as possible um, to, uh, you know, we have, we have email set up, we have Fishing Chaos, which is phenomenal to be able to reach those people. YouTube, uh, you don't even need to have an, an account or social media to go on YouTube and, and watch our captain's meetings and things like that. So there's ways to stay informed and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, I forget, I forget what your original question was, but as far as like, um just like you said like at what point does it become too big or manageable you know i think it's interesting because and and you know for our podcast listeners out there as well you know i talk about this a lot where bass masters has this issue where you get the growing pains of you're going to have a 300 vote tournament and then you're locked into only going to three places and then mlf comes around and they think like well what if we split the field to two different days and now we can go to a bunch of different bodies of water neat concept maybe not executed very well and that's a dilemma is like the more boats you have or the more kayaks you have now there's less places you go and then you have that issue as well and it's a balancing act there's no right answer to it and, and it's really how do you deal with that and then you look at northern virginia area you know we have 
we have the anglers, we have the money, people have the, the, the exposable income here. We're blessed with that yeah. where people want to get into fishing. And this is a lot easier to do than buying a $120,000, you know, the icon boat. So it is a unique situation for both of you where you have the base that will probably grow. And it's how do you approach that in the future? And it's going to be tough. Yep. Yeah, but on, on the other side of things, before we switch to the other tournament, when do you think, and you don't have to give it a definite, when do you think your schedules will kind of be announced for next year? Do you want to go, Joe? Do you know? <laughs> I don't know yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it pretty hard here the past couple of days because I see some some uh, of the uh, – I, I, okay, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I kind of wait and see what everybody else kind of does at the national level first. Um, and I based it off of – and only been this one year, so I'm only basing it off my one try at this. And I based it off of when I released ours, uh, once KBF announced they were coming to the Potomac, you announced, you, you released your schedule about that, about that time afterwards. And I think that's when I, I decided that's when I could plot where the Potomac would be for, for us. So that's what I waited on this past year. So this year I've just, I kind of have an idea, but I don't know. About one of them. So I try to make ours a Christmas present. So that's, that's sort of the kind of the what we've been doing the last couple of years, last few years is uh, trying to get it out, you know, around the holidays. Uh, folks, it usually works pretty well for folks. It's kind of when everybody's in planning mode for the following year. I know some folks are already planning. They started planning weeks ago, uh, but that it generally works for for me and my family. They, you know, because I got to be there too for this stuff. So, um, trying to. I want to get it done early. I don't want to wait because I'm also trying to work sponsor stuff too between now and then. So it's just a, a lot of, a lot of moving parts right now, but that's, that's sort of what we're aiming for. Um, I don't know what, uh, what KBF has planned for next year officially. Mm. Uh, I don't even know if they dropped their schedule. I have not looked or even checked to be honest with you. It was my bad, <laughs> but I don't um, think they have you know, we're going to we're going to obviously keep tabs on that. But in talking with Chad Hoover this year, I don't know that they're going to be coming back to the Potomac River. And that's that's all I know at this point. Um, now, that being said, obviously, they still have partnerships with people in this area and, and different tours and bureaus and things like that. So it may be up to us to you know, to the, the clubs in this area to, to take reign of that and to really promote kayak fishing with the, uh, with the community. Right. So that's, and obviously that's as far as NVKBA is concerned, that's one of our, our big pillars. Like I have what we call the, 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 the three C's, the competition, community and camaraderie. And that community piece, you know, I feel like we need to do a better job with that as, as NVKBA and as me, as a tournament director, something that I want to continue to not only grow the fishing community, but be involved in our local community, uh, sending, you know, fish data to D DWR, uh, just being a, um, better at that kind of stuff. So I want to, that's kind of one of my biggest goals moving into, uh, you know, 2024. So. Good deal. Good deal. And guys, we've reached the part of the show, um, the heroes on the water benefit tournament. How did this become a thing? What are the rules? Just take it away. Yeah, so we always, again, trying to be um, involved in the community as much as possible, right? We always, as NVKBA, have tried to do some sort of a, a charity event or benefit tournament um, every year uh, for somebody, for, for, a, for a beneficiary that we find valuable. A lot of times it's uh, with the military community uh, and, the, and the law enforcement community because we have a lot of, obviously, a lot of that community in this area. Um We've done, uh, yeah, pretty much it's been mostly with our veterans. Uh, and it always ha happens to be around Veterans Day because it's the end of the season. Everybody's kind of gearing up for winter and hunting, but there's still some really good fishing to be had. So we thought it'd be a good time. You know, once everybody's done with the original season or with, with the, uh, the regular season and the classic to end with one big bang, you know, and try to raise as much funds as possible to a, a lucky beneficiary. Over the years, it's been with... Heroes on the Water, uh, George Washington chapter. Once that uh, phased out, we had a entity or a um, uh, nonprofit called Bravo Zulu Outdoors. Did that for a few years with Carl Schwartz, who used to also run the George Washington uh, Heroes on the Water chapter. Both organizations, unfortunately, um, 
basically disbanded and we were kind of left to try to find another beneficiary. Uh, we did a thing with uh, uh, Mission 22, um, National Organization for, uh, you know, to, for Veteran Suicide Awareness, um, the 22 a day um, statistic. We, we felt we've, we've donated to them. We've ran tournaments, a tournament for them. Uh, and then this year, a new Heroes on the Water chapter popped up. So now we have a new chapter in the area based out of Fredericksburg. Uh, Mr. Henry Larrick and Philip Liggins, both firefighters, right, Joe? Yeah. Um, for, um, I, I want to say, is it King George? They, they, they fight fires. Yeah, so awesome dudes. Uh, yeah. And, of course, they have a lot of folks working with them as well. And uh, they got a lot of good equipment now, but they still need more equipment. They still need more funds to be able to – to run the event. So basically I'll give a real quick um, rundown on Heroes on the Water. It is an organization, a national level organization that uh, takes wounded warriors, veterans, active duty members, law enforcement, first responders, and their families, right? This is a family thing. It's not just about the, the individual, but a family thing because therapy involves everybody. It's a team effort. And what we, they do is uh, get them out on the water in kayaks uh, fishing, if you'd like, uh, you don't have to fish. Uh, again, it's open and it's free to to anybody who served or is currently serving, um, or is in you know the law enforcement first responder community. It gets them out and gets them, uh, you know, on the water. So and, it, and it's really good because, as you know, Joe, and as you know, uh, Thomas, I know mean, you have your own kayak. It's therapeutic when you're out there. It's very intimate, especially when you're by yourself. Uh, but to be able to not everybody has the ability to do that some folks have disabilities and things like that and this organization again as a national level organization does a fantastic job in helping out our heroes and what they do is they have chapters all over the, the country um i think the other the next closest one to us is the tidewater chapter um, based out of virginia beach area um, but again we have such a huge um, service uh, community in our area that it was it was missing uh, after BZO left. So really happy to see him back. And, and as the kayak clubs in the area, we want to do everything in our power to get them up and running and to be able to help out with raising funds and awareness and all that good stuff. So that's why this is so important and why, um, you know, we're, we're holding this tournament. And, and then guys, ask all your questions. I have marked all the questions. We're going to get to all of them as we continue here. Um, if you would like, would you like me to save all the questions to the very end or just kind of pop them up on the screen? As oh, man, if you got them coming, uh, we'll, we'll answer them, dude. Sweet. We got Justin B. Fishing. Tournament question, when you can answer, if I catch 10 fish bigger than my partner, is it only my top five fish that count? That is correct. Each teammate can only catch up to five fish. So if you catch all five, your partner's got to pull some weight. That's the that's the format we went with. I think that's the same format we used last time we did this as well, and it, and it worked out pretty good. Now that said, you can uh, you know we, we want this to be a, a you know low 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 pressure. Um, this isn't a cutthroat you know um, you know got to follow every single rule to the T kind of thing like a like a normal trail series. We want you to get there and we want you to have fun. If you're fishing with your significant other, if you're fishing with a child. Help them out, man. You know, obviously, <laughs> don't measure your fish as their fish, but if they catch a fish and, and they need help measuring, you know, throw them a board, help them measure, help them submit, all that good stuff. We want this to be fun, all right? This is not something that you need to stress about or, or go out there and, and um, you know, uh, you know, share information, do all that stuff. We just want you to have a good time and support a great cause. Philip, is the line of sight rule still in effect or can you fish separately? line of sight as far as so that, i think he's asking because they're teaming up oh no yeah, absolutely that's, that's you can no. fish yeah you can definitely fish separately we have because what we're going to do is is randomly pair folks um you're we're going to randomly pair folks who, who don't come to us with a team already um i have i have a few teams i got to put in the system tonight right now it says zero team teams in there but don't don't worry that'll be adjusted before the event starts and you'll be randomly paired with somebody who uh, from from somewhere around the state who knows where they're going to fish. Could be to your benefit, especially if you uh, are fishing um, Lake Frederick and you have somebody down on the chick, right? I think you're going to do you know still do pretty well so for your yeah. team. So 
you know, that's, that's definitely not a, a requirement. You don't have to fish with your partner. You can absolutely communicate with your partner, share information, all that good stuff. I think guys, again, if you are fishing Frederick, Lee, I'm talking to you. You probably want to pair with somebody on the check. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> Um, I mean, better better start calling Casey Reed and see if he's got a partner yeah. yet. <laughs> uh, he, he's already got one, unfortunately. I bet he's out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I gotta put that team in there. I forget what they what the team name is, but yeah, throw me if you if you know your partner, throw us throw throw uh, email me the names of the of the anglers on the team, and if you want to have a team name, otherwise I may give you a goofy name or something. But you'll you'll be in the <laughs> system and ready to go. It's gonna be a good time. I think right now, let me pull it up. And hit refresh. We're 35 anglers already, so that's that's pretty good. That's, that's more than last year. I think we had 20 or 25 last year. So, I mean, you do the math. What's 35? 35. What time? Just too late. Good lord. 1400. Oh. Calculator. Too many years in for that. I mean, yeah, <laughs> dude, we're pushing. You know, giving heroes on the water upwards of a thousand dollars just for entry fees. So it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. I'd love to see this thing at 40 or 50 anglers. Now, well, here's a good segue question with that from uh, Joshua uh, Gray. Can we donate our money and win in the raffle? I'm unable to fish the two-week stretch. Oh, most definitely, man. Even if you can only get out one day, like you can absolutely just sign up for the tournament if you want to do it that way. 50% of your money is going to go to Heroes on the Water that way. And then uh, the raffle, I think you can also do a separate donation, but I mean, really, man, just buy extra tickets. That, that'd be the best way to help out with all this because everything in the raffle is going to go to Heroes on the Water. Um, everything in that, that all the prizes have already been paid for. So, um, yeah, man, every pretty much every single thing that's going or every single ticket that's going in that uh, raffle is going to get to Heroes on the Water. I think we're getting, we're pushing $1,000 there already, too. So, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, five tickets for like 60 bucks. I think you get a hundred or 10 tickets for 120 ish or something like that. So yeah, it'll be good. And, and then, and you already mentioned this, but I want to make sure we really clarify this, especially guys, it's going to be re-uploaded as a podcast episode for all my Apple podcast, Spotify, and iHeart listeners. You don't have, this doesn't have to start day one, November 3rd for you. If you're listening to this and it ends up being Monday of next week, you can still enter this and participate. Correct. Absolutely. And that was one of the big reasons why, you know, I, I knew it was going to be, we're, we originally had planned this for a one day tournament, but given the fact that we had to change our classic uh, and, and we had to, you know, we were throwing a curveball there. We had to move our classic into um, was it October. Um, it just kind of threw everything off. And I didn't want to, for lack of better words, half ass this tournament. I wanted to get this as big as possible. I guarantee if we would have had, a one day event, we probably would have had maybe 15, 20 guys show up, which is great. Obviously, we appreciate anything, but the bigger we can make this, the better. We have folks coming up, you know, fishing this from Virginia Beach, fishing this from down south. Uh, so, this is pro probably going to be the format from here on out, um, just to make it as big as possible. Because, again, it's not about it's about raising funds for a good cause and whatever we got to do to maximize that, we're going to do it. Uh, but, what yeah, like, your, what you're saying about the time frames, right? You don't have to fish. <laughs> Obviously, if, if 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 I had two plus weeks to fish, that'd be amazing. But um, you know, it starts midnight Friday. So actually, midnight Thursday into Friday. So you can wake up super early before you go to work and put on the water. You can fish at the at nighttime. Obviously, follow all your rules. Follow all your Coast Guard laws. Have your lights. All that good stuff. Um, don't be stupid out there, right? Like, to do the right thing. But it's open for a reason to be able to maximize. What in a perfect world is a thousand dollars really your goal? Uh, if you had some kind of goal that you'd like to raise, dude, I'd like to raise a uh, hundred thousand if I could. You know, it's just whatever, whatever we can we can push their way as uh, as a as a thank you for obviously for what they do and to um, assist their mission. I don't have a set number. I think I have the raffle goal as like thirty five hundred or something like that, but I'm not set on that number. Obviously, I'd love to go more than that. Uh, I'm, first and foremost, I'm just appreciative of what folks are willing to donate, you know, plain and simple. Um, times are tough right now. We all know that uh, the economy is in shambles and, you know, I won't get into all that. But, um, you know, times are hard for a lot of folks. So 
Uh, whatever they're able to, to donate is amazing. Even if they can't donate and they just want to show their support and share the awareness, that's what matters. That's what matters here. Right on. Um, I think we're really caught up on, on all the questions right now. Is there anything else in particular that people should know about uh, as this tournament approaches? Man, it's kind of turning into a little captain's meeting, isn't it, Joe? It is. <laughs> Which is good because we're not holding a captain's meeting for this. I think I see one there about, uh, about the bump boards for trash fit, trash fish. With it. Oh, uh, yeah, hold on. Trash fish. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, man, that's awesome. So, no, yeah. Uh, Again, I put in the rule or in the, I just actually updated the tournament description before we started the show just to make sure I had all my, you know, T's crossed and I's dotted. But uh, VKAE has up on their website the rules, right? So we're going to basically follow their snakehead measuring rules because we know a lot of these bycatches, they're toothy critters. You yeah. might catch a freaking 48 inch muskie. And I don't know if you have the board for it, but. Uh, <laughs> if you catch a muskie, you know, probably you win. I mean, that's it's really going to be plain and simple. Uh, no, but it, yeah, blue cat yeah. might beat you out if you're on a the blue zone. cat, true. Yeah, that's very really true. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's catfish, it's muskie, it's whatever freshwater fish you catch yeah. that's bigger than a large mouth bass. You throw and then the, the stripers are going to start running a little bit, so you might find a migratory yeah. one. I don't know. People are nailing them down at uh, Lake Anna already, too. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, man. So, yeah, but any, any, yeah, you want to talk board, about that board say, a little bit. I would say any trough board is, is going to work. Um, our rules are going to say we prefer catch um, as a brand and then uh, Freebill, Yak Gear. And Freebill has like the gray expandable one, right? Right. It's a pretty common board and it's pretty cheap too. That's a cheap one. Uh, a, a better, yet even better cheap one is the Yak Gear. I forget, it's like a Yak Stick or something, what it's called. It folds out three ways. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a better board if you're going to go a little bit. Uh, that's like a expensive. 32 or 36, right? Something around there. Yeah. That's part that's in our rules. And then the hog trough has kind of like a catch style board. Uh, but those are the four boards we use. But as long as it's a trough board, I don't think uh, we're going to get too picky. Yeah. You can't use rulers. You can't use you know, yeah, no tape, measuring no tape. Rulers. Something like that. No, no leg tattoos. Right, yeah, no. <laughs> So will there be, I, I know with the MVKBA events that you generally like to have some kind of get together after the event, um, even with some of the five lakes uh, terms that you put on, will there be something like that? Or is this going to be completely online, even at the award ceremony? You know what? Um, I would love to have something. Only issue with having something is obviously the amount of folks that are spread out. Um, I think, you know, realistically, I think what's going to happen is going to be a live awards Maybe you'll be there, Thomas, um, or something along those lines. I'd like to still be able to have some folks there. Maybe we do it somewhere at like a local uh, venue, brewery, whatever it may be. Uh, it would be cool to have, you know, if we want to, you know, obviously invite folks out, that'd be awesome. I don't know, wouldn't expect everybody to be there, but what I would really like to do is to be able to physically present um, some sort of a check or um, just, uh, you know, uh, something for heroes on the water i'd love for them to be able to come out if we do something like that i think that'd be pretty awesome i already got the check in the mail today or yesterday from custom Make for the hoodie fundraiser that we did so we raised a couple bucks for them there obviously i'm gonna give that to them when i see them um, or i may have to actually cash that one and then donate it separately because i think it's in mvkba's name but either way we'll do something like that I, i'd really like to do something depending everyone's availability but if uh, folks can't meet up for whatever reason. We'll absolutely do it live, um, you know, and, and go that route and, and mail everything out to folks. Obviously, there's raffles, right? Big kayak, uh, RVR bonafide, one seventeen or whatever. It's, I don't remember the, the size. It's shy of twelve feet. That one we're gonna have to coordinate pickup for, but there's gonna be good photo ops there and stuff like that. So, yeah, big shout out to to um, Hardman team. They're the ones who are donating that that prize and, and a few of the other prizes for this for this raffle. Uh, real estate, great real estate company up in uh, Fairfax. So if you're in the market for a house, let me know and I'll hook you up with uh, with some great folks at the Hartman team. Yeah, um, a lot of other great sponsors too for this for this uh, for this tournament. Yeah, Ben uh, got my MVKBA sweatshirt this afternoon. They are out. They are sweet. Um, and this was a this is anecdotal. When we did the, um, we had our, our Halloween uh, costume party get together at Jake's and we had a guy come in that was from MVKBA 
and he found out about you guys and he said like yeah i'm a teacher and i can't you know i wanted to get into fishing i want to get into tournament fishing to scratch that itch and i'm so glad i found you guys and that's the thing about i think kayak fishing in, in particular as bass loses their mind and it becomes you know three hundred thousand dollars to get into boat side of stuff like mm -hmm. kayaking is still in that nice threshold area where you can be married and actually do this and i think you guys are really set up in the right area and, and if you really want to get into tournament fishing you don't need to get you know a torpedo and have four graphs yet you can get the guy that won two two years ago now i mean he was paddling all over the place and he won aoy um so you can still be competitive with a, a more basic so please get out there and, and and try to enjoy this sport. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely. I'm gonna scroll through here to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm sorry. Hey, also, also, those that are thinking about getting in the tournament or, or have already signed up and you didn't sign up for the the side pot, do that. Uh, VKE threw down a hundred bucks on top. So yep, that was the other thing. It's I was just missing. gonna be free money right there. Um, go back in there and buy that ticket. So I think it's ten bucks, right, Mike? Also got um, VA boys detailing, my buddy Jerry Andrade. This was the guy that uh, who introduced me to, to Northern Virginia kayak fishing. Uh, when I first moved to the area back in 2016, he started up his own detailing, car auto detailing business, and he's been doing awesome things. And uh, we have set aside the Plan C. So it's basically a full, full blown detail for your car or truck. Um, one lucky winner is going to take that home. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. But yeah, no, we have Bent Rod Fishing. They supplied an awesome prize box. It's going to be raffled away. A bunch of cool Yak Attack goodies. Um, man, what else do I have on here? I got a, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, of course, I don't have it up when I need it. But yeah, just go check out the, the, the event page. Um, please support the sponsors that are. Oh, Rogue Gear. Uh, we're going to have uh, a cool prize pack from Rogue, cool prize pack from Real, Real Snot. Um, and of course, Paddle VA, man, Appomattox River Company, hooking us up with good deals on all this equipment. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Guys, you know, closing thoughts for tonight. Joe, thank you, brother. I'm glad you're a part of it, man. And hopefully, as this thing uh, grows every year, we can get the whole state involved. Obviously, we're here to support our Fredericksburg chapter, but. You know, if anything, it'll encourage other clubs to do the same for their local chapters. Uh, and I, and clubs do it. They do do a fantastic job of, of supporting their local chapters. So just keep it up, guys. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited to, to, to see it keep growing. Sign up. If you got any questions, let me know. I'll let Joe know. Yeah, same here, Thomas. Thanks, thanks for having us. And, and Mike, thank you, as always, for everything you do for us. And uh, we're just proud and happy to be part of, of supporting and – heroes on the water mike and i have talked about it you know i think both and i had both mike and i had both talked about possibly diving into being the heroes on the water leads over time and over the years we were just yeah. About it. yeah it's just uh like we need something man so proud that you know and, and happy that you know philip and henry let you know stepped up and have taken over so i just got word that philip and henry are going to be on a team together so i'm looking <laughs> forward to seeing that man that'll be cool yeah a couple sticks so hats off to those two guys for, for taking it on and we're Absolutely. happy to support. It's not an easy task. It really is mm. not. Uh, and they're doing just, you know, the, the value added and the value to the community and, and the folks who need the therapy and just need to get outside is second to none. No, it, it is. And unless you stand up and actually get involved, nothing can rather happen, whether it's in your local community, it's a little bit bigger, you know, if you're running for governor or, you know, doing – like the black bass community board anything like that you got to step up in your local community to actually get something accomplished um got guys as always look in the episode description to everything that we talked about today i have linked everything for virginia kayak uh, angler kayak elites i hate acronyms my god they screw me up virginia angler kayak elites and northern virginia kayak association got it that time okay. and then <laughs> um, i talk for a living i'm, I count, I'm counting on you <laughs> you'll be all right good lord but anyway oh, guys hey, one more thing thomas Thank you to all of our veterans out there. Happy birthday to the Marine Corps as well. Amen. Amen. Guys, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, check us out on Patreon. We'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle. 
located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.